Hi everybody, welcome to another Torben's live colour session. My name is Fiona, I'm a Torben's colour specialist and we're here tonight to answer all of your colour questions. So as we always do every um, Thursday night when we conduct these sessions, we ask you please to pop any questions that you have in regards to um, any projects that you're embarking on, whether you're wanting to know something about interior or exterior colour consultancy, and certainly anything that you'd like to know about our products. This is an opportunity for you to um, ask as many questions as you like. Um, as you do, pop your questions into the feed. If there's a particular area that you're wanting to know a little bit about colouring for your home, please, if you have an opportunity, pop a photograph in as well. So that gives me something to um, talk to and to help um, understand you know, the area that you're wanting to colour up, so to speak. So tonight we're going to focus a little bit on um, exterior. We're going to do a little bit of a mini masterclass on um, painting and tonight's session is colouring your courtyards. So this came about, I've been asked quite frequently when I'm out and about in store, um, questions that come to us via our social channels, etc. in regards to what would be, you know, a fantastic colour to use in my exterior space. And the reason people are asking the question is, you know, a lot of people don't want to colour up the whole exterior of their house. So, and you may not be able to if you're living in um, an apartment, um, if you're living in a townhouse, um, even if you're living in a rental and you're wanting to inject some colour, um, this is an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about um, how the colour can look and how it can work within the space and, you know, where to apply. And also, um, we'll touch on a few of the, um, we'll go through the Torbman's Colour Library, but I've picked out a few of my favourite colours and popped them into, I've drawn up um, an exterior, I've drawn up a, a little townhouse, um, popped in the courtyard, etc., and we'll inject it with some colour. Um, as I always do in these sessions, I'm going to take you through Colour Smith, and I'm going to show you how you can create your beautiful own bespoke colours. And we're actually going to show you where you can um, utilise those within a courtyard space again. And I also do have quite a few um, questions already, so I'll go through this and then we'll do a little bit on colour smith and then I'll start to answer um, a lot of your questions. So I'm going to make a start. So as I always say, colour is very, very personal. Um, colour has the ability to evoke an emotion. And you know, we all connect with certain colours for many different reasons. So, and that's what makes it really, really personal. And for me, as you, if, if you've been following me, I seem to be talking really fast and I need to just slow it down. And for me, if you've been following sessions that, um, that we do, you'll have heard me talking about the fact that we are renovating a house and we are. And at this point in time, we are doing um, a backyard and we're about to pop a pool into our backyard space. Now, you know, I'm all about using colour. Um, I think that, you know, I really want these sessions to be about giving you confidence with colour. But I also understand too the importance of when you colour up the exterior of your dwelling, you really want it to sit really well within its environment. And so for me, if I were to go and paint, say, for example, the exterior of the front of my house in a beautiful green, it may not necessarily sit with what else is happening in the street. So for me, the outside area, the backyard, which, you know, will have oh, kind of like a little bit of a you could almost say a bit of a courtyard sort of area, an entertaining area. We're going to use three tones of beautiful green. So this is the space where I can inject some of our personality and I want the space to be a really calm, beautiful space, hence the green. So um, I'm going to take you now on a little bit of a journey. I have put together, um, as I said earlier, I've drawn up a quick townhouse and I'm going to inject it with some colour and I want to show you. So I'm going to take myself off the screen, put my computer onto the screen. So you can see that now. Fantastic. And I'll just pop myself into the corner so you can see me there. So here we have um, a townhouse that I have drawn up and I have used um, a couple of beautiful Torbman's colours on it. So you will see from the first townhouse, the exterior I've used Torbman's Thin Ice. So I'm just going to pan this around here. Sorry, just beautiful, um, a beautiful soft, um, it's a soft, very soft muted grey. It's a cooler grey. And so you'll find that when you start looking at what colours work really well with it, um, greens, blues, etc., and obviously um, darker greys, look, a lot of colours work with it. But I've taken one of my favourite colours, which is um, Torbman's Painted Turtle. And I have popped it on the walls, as you can see here as I pan it around, I've popped it on the walls in the courtyard. 
So this just shows you it's one way of injecting color into a space. You're personalizing the space. I mean, you're creating a beautiful backdrop for you know your plants, your greenery, your outdoor furniture, and it's a really fantastic area for entertaining. So I'm going to now take you across to another quick little elevation here, drawing. So same townhouse. Um, again, I have thin ice um, on the main body of the house here, as you can see. But then for the courtyard wall color, I'll just pan you around a little bit here. I have used Torbman's Trendy. It is a beautiful, beautiful um, dark gray going into a black. It is fantastic. And um, in this space, the trees are only relatively young, as you can see. But, you know, once they grow up, so to speak, if this were um, the outside of my house, for example, once the trees grow up and you get all that beautiful greenery against a really dark back backdrop, it looks fantastic. So if you're wanting to, you know, have a, you, you're really wanting, say, your, um, your plants, etc., to really come to life, this is where using something like Torman's Trendy can work really, really well. So I'm just going to quickly take you across to another one. Here we go. Whoops. That's what happens when we're live. Again, um, same dwelling. This time I have put on here Torman's Grey Matter for the main body of um, the townhouse. And in here I have used a beautiful color called Torman's Mountain Stream. I think that this is absolutely divine. It's fresh. Um, again, it's very calming. You know, it makes a great um, color if you were living in a coastal environment. It just looks beautiful. And again, you know, with your, your, your greenery, etc., in front of it, fantastic. So the next one, lucky last, and then I'll start answering some questions because I can see quite a lot of questions happening here. Again, same space. On the walls here, we have, um, oh, let me just make sure I've got the right drawing. I've got all my notes written here. On my walls, I have um, Torbman's Grey Matter again. But what I've actually done here is, and you can see, and this is where it be really would become um, applicable if you were living in, say, um, a townhouse, etc., where, you know, you've got a body corporate and you can't just go and paint the space, for example, or if you're renting and you're wanting to inject some color. So what I've done here is I'm just going to pan it around and show you. I've created, I've actually created these colors. So, and we've got some panels here and look, you can go into, you can certainly order beautiful decorative panels that you can paint. Um, so you could order some beautiful patent, patent panels, for example, that might have some tropical leaves or whatever you might be into, and you can create your own colors. So on here, I have created three beautiful colors. And what I've actually taken my inspiration from is in the pot there, you can see a bird of paradise. So I have created a color from that. So I'm going to show you how to use Torbman's Color Smith um, and show you how you can create your own colors. And I think when you're um, looking for inspiration, I always say this, you know, look to nature. If you've got beautiful um, potted plants, etc., within your space, why not bring one of the beautiful colors to life? So I'm now going to switch from me and take you over to my um, iPad. I will put myself back onto the screen. Beautiful. Now, Torbman's Colorsmith, you can see an app that we have in the corner there. So you can download the app um, via um, the App Store or Google Play, depending on the um, smart device or smartphone, etc., that you have. So it opens up, so I've opened the app up and it presents us, the first screen here is you can either create from match or you can create from a color library. So the color library, I'll just very quickly show you this. The color library has been pre-populated um, by color category, if you like, beautiful colors. And you can go through there, you can search away, you can dilute, intensify, etc., etc., and you can name a color, create your own color. So this is a really good place to start if you're unsure of what you're looking for. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen, but this time I'm going to create a color from match. So I'm going to hit create from match. And then I've taken a photo of a beautiful bird of paradise. So I'm going to use my photo library. So I'll click on that. Oh, we can see them all here already. Um, I do have some albums. I'll go into my color smith and I'm going to use that photo there. Now, watch what happens. You can see at the top, just under color smith where it says tap to create your color. You can see a band of color, a band of blue. Now there is, um, 
a circle on here which is what I call the eye and as I move the eye up and down the um, photograph you'll see the color, the band of color change and when you find your desired color that's when you can stop and hit select so let's do it so I can go um, and bring to life look a beautiful part of the um, the orange part of the flower so now that I've done that I'll hit select I can hit save my color and then I hit manage and edit name so I'm going to call this um, bird of paradise <laughs> very unique hey okay so okay now that I've created a color as such um, I can do a couple of things so I can go into my local hardware store where it says order in store um, I can take that in it populates as you can see on the screen a QR code now that QR code contains all of the information that is needed to create that color it's basically the recipe to make that color so the other thing that I can do is I can hit share and I can share it across all of my social media platforms I can share it via airdrop um, I can text email um, yeah it's fantastic it is really fantastic with what you can do so I'll just go back um, I can also order a test pot so for everybody that is still in lockdown you can actually um, hit order a test pot it goes to your cart you populate it with all of your information your address etc etc and if you order four um, test pots it's free delivery so it's a really good way to um, to test your colors and I always recommend whether you're ordering um, you know a color that you've created or whether you're ordering a color say from our Torbman's library always start with a sample pot that way you can make sure that the color is going to work with the environment that you're wanting to put it into so I've created a color now now the next thing that I can do in here as you can see down on the bottom of the screen um, if you go right down it says RGB so that's the red green blue so they're the color values that I use to populate my drawing at that so as I showed you before the, the three panels now I can go back again and I can create another color so again we can go into oh, look you can pick up some beautiful beautiful tones I'm going to hit select again save my color manage oops and we'll edit the name so I'll name it again um, bird of paradise number two here we go again um, again order in store populates that QR code take it in etc um, if you're not wanting to do that you can order a test pot here we go view cart it's popped one into my cart I can populate all the information etc etc so that's a fantastic way of bringing um, some beautiful flowers etc that you may have in your garden to life um, you know the colors to life to populate your space with and I'll just take you back very quickly to the image there just to show you again what um, how I created the colors with Colorsmith as I just went through but as you can see here on the image on the screen there are the colors that I created that are on the wall there so that's how easy it is so if you're at home and you're wanting to um, you know have a play with color you're wanting to create some color for your space download the Colorsmith app and um, get color creating it is fantastic awesome so I'm going to come back to the screen now and I think that I may start now there are a few questions that I managed to get um, off the feed just before we started let's just have a look and see what we have here Wow okay so well I've got a lot so let me what I may do is I'm going to quickly just take you through um, here we go I'll pop, pop the iPad back up and I'm going to put myself back on okay so these are some of the questions that I managed to get off um, off the feed just before we started and this one is from Priscilla so thank you very much Priscilla for joining our session tonight so your question is that I'm thinking about painting white with charcoal trims and a red door and on my new digs here so as you can see on the screen there is an image of um, her home so thank you very much for the image now if you're wanting to um, introduce charcoal I'd also look to you could paint the roof looking at that with something like um, color one monument I think that would work really really well and for the main body of the house I would have a look at Torman's South Pole um, to inject or to use the beautiful um, 
grey charcoal trims that you're talking about, have a look at Taubman's grey moggy. And for your front door, have a look at Taubman's Ponciana Red. Now, for the Ponciana Red, and I'm going to take you now to the um, to my laptop, and I'm going to show you very quickly, and I'll put myself back on the screen in the corner, I'm going to show you very quickly where you can find colour. So now if you go over to um, Taubman's, .com.au and you pop onto their website and then as you can see here you go onto colors and then it's got the drop down menu and you hit paint colors and it's pretty much going to bring you up with what I have here now if you scroll down it gives you the ability to select a color family so you've got whites neutrals grays and blacks browns and blacks yellow green etc etc but it also gives you the option if you're looking for a particular color where you can use the search engine there so I'm going to do that now because I want to show you the um, Ponciana Red because I think it's beautiful. Let's just hope it comes up. Let's hope, yes, beautiful. Okay, so here we go. It is happening. And I'll just go to the last image. Here is the colour. This is the colour for the front door, uh, Priscilla, that I think would work really, really well. Now, to make sure, it does stipulate that you need a grey undercoat. And I do um, get, let's just say, a little bit of pushback when we're talking about bright colors. People are like, why do I need to use a gray undercoat? It's a very valid question. But if you're wanting to ensure color accuracy and you're wanting your color to be um, intense and be true to color of what you're viewing and of what you're seeing on a color chip, you need to use the gray undercoat. It's going to ensure that you get the color that you're after. Because sometimes if you're going straight onto a white, a white can have a tendency to bleed through. So that gray gives you a really solid um, background giving you the depth of the color. Now the other thing that I want to show you and I'll bring myself back to the screen is when we talk about using colors such as um, a red or etc for a front door it's a really good idea or if you want the color, color sorry to really pop um, use a gloss finish. Now I'll show you here's a standard let's hope you can see this here yep standard color chip now here's the same standard color chip but what I've done this time is I have put some clear tape over half of it just to show you how intense the color looks when you gloss it up. So that's why when we're talking about doing beautiful colors for front doors etc always use a gloss and if you're wanting to see what the color is going to look like in a gloss and you've got a color chip if you put a bit of clear tape over as I did here it's going to give you um, you know it's going to give you an idea of what the color is going to look like. So I hope that helps there. Okay, the next question that I had on the feed was um, we um, so from Jojo. Thank you very very much for joining us tonight. Um, we have a Renault in the making, but we'll probably be stuck with the dark brown roof and guttering. We want to stay warm. Would love your color suggestions. So I had a look at your image, um, and I'm thinking that because you're wanting to stay warm, have a look at Torbman's Grey Locks. It is a fantastic, beautiful. It's um, I guess you could say it's between a grey and a beige, but it's quite warm. And if you were to offset that with Taubman's Tahira White, I think you'd have a beautiful colour scheme. So do have a look at that. Okay, and the next question that I had was from Elise. Thank you very much, Elise, for joining our session. So she said, do people still do feature colour front doors? I have a modern Hamptons facade of grey and white that is crying out for a pop of colour. The current colour of the door is white. Well, yes, they do. And as I've been talking about tonight, that, you know, colour is very personal. And if you're not wanting to um, inject a lot of colour into your space, so to speak, the other place to inject colour is your front door. And when we talk about using um, bright colours, etc., for interiors, you know, it creates a focal point. And that's what a coloured front door does. It creates that focal point, you know, it's the entrance to the home, etc., so given that you're doing a Hamptons theme, I automatically think of beautiful, beautiful blues. And so I have come up with um, four blues for you. And the first one is Torbman's um, Mountain Stream. Um, and then followed by Torbman's November Rains. Um, and then if you're wanting something a little bit darker, we've got Elegant Evening and Torbman's Black Flame. So I'm going to show you here very, very quickly. Hopefully my favourites are going to come up. Maybe not. Let's go again and I'll just pop them in. Okay, let's go in. I'll, I will show you um, November Rains. I think it is a beautiful colour. It would be good if I could spell. 
let's not do that all right let me just get that up for you and let's have a look here okay it's just working its magic won't be a moment and then i'll pop it up on the screen for us all All right, I'll just give that a moment. Seems to be wanting to take a little bit of time. I might answer another question while that's slowly working its way through. Okay, so another question that I have here, let me have a look. Um, okay. Okay, Lindy D, thank you very much for joining our session tonight. So your question is, I'm having such trouble visualizing colors and what goes with other colors not being able to get to the hardware store to look at swatches because of lockdown okay so i'll take you to my screen now and i can show you where you can look for color so we'll just um we'll just come over there so as i was saying before you go to torbmans.com.au and you can go into paint colors and then you can scroll oops we'll just give it a moment and then you can scroll your way down there. You can select, have a look at colors. So for example, I'm going to take you onto green because I tend to gravitate towards green. Um, there's Painted Turtle, um, the color that I features be featured before. But you can have a look here and then if you keep scrolling down, look, there are some beautiful, beautiful tones. And I think that with um, everybody in lockdown, this is a fantastic place to start. And you can just keep browsing and browsing colors. The other thing you can do when you um, when you select a color that or when you've selected a color that you like, you can actually have a look at. Let me just take you through um, the color visualizer. So you can hop into the color visualizer. You can upload your own image, or you can use the images that are on there. Um, you can put colors in there, and you can pop them into the space that you're wanting to color up. And this is a really really good way of giving you um, an idea of how the color is going to look or work. Um, the other thing that you can also do is you can vi visit um, our Colour Swatch Centre. You can type in a colour there, you can bring it up, you can order swatches while you are in lockdown. Let me just show you how that works. So here we are, we're brought up to, again, two menus here. Let's search for a colour, for example. So let me just pop in, as I was looking for before, November rains. Where are we? November rains beautiful here we go here's the beautiful color so let's view color details maybe we won't yes we will awesome here we go beautiful beautiful tone so you can have a look lindy through here you can um, type in some color names etc etc and then what you can actually do is you can order a swatch or you can order a test pot and you can have it delivered to your door so this is a great way of looking for colour while we're still in lockdown. I hope that helps. Ah, oh, what's another question that we have? Wow, I might just start at the top here. Um, okay. Okay. Nicole, hi Nicole, thank you very much for joining our session. I've just bought an investment house which is in the peach and yellow tones, but I'd like to modernise it. Coastal Hamptons style. The brick is whitewash, so I'd like to pick up on the whitewash. So I would like maybe two colours that would go nicely. So Nicole, do you actually have um, do you have an image of that that we could have a look at? Um, so if you have an image, that's fantastic. I can have a look. The other thing you could do though is if you download, as I've shown you before, the Colorsmith app and you put the image of the whitewashed brick into it. And then what you can do is, if um, I probably should show you, you can actually use the combinations function then. So you can create the color, hit combinations, and it will bring you up a beautiful color palette of colors. And that way you can actually, um, you, can, you can create your own color. And then you can um, pop onto the um, website, you can order a sample pot, etc. So let me just quickly, take you back to um, color smith and I just want to uh, create for match let's just see if I've got an image of something here that we can have a quick look at I need to find a 
a brick. Let's let's bring you back up onto my um, iPad instead of me talking to myself. Let's start again. So I've started at the app. I've hit the app. I am presented with the um, I'm presented with the home page. I go to create from match. I go into a photo library. I can have a look at some beautiful colors here. Um, for example, I'm just going to use this. I don't have a brick with me, but I'm going to create a color here, for example. Let's hit select. I'll hit save my color and then I can hit manage. And then what I can do, you can see just below where it says color smith, um, you've got manage color or combination. So you can hit combinations and it brings you up with a color palette of colors that are designed to work with the color that you've created. So for example, um, you know, I've got that beautiful dusty sort of pink um, from the Duna cover that I've created. And then if I were to scroll down here, there's beautiful muted pink, there's a beautiful mushroom sort of tone, and there's even a beautiful teal tone. So if you hop in there, this is pre-populating some beautiful, beautiful colors that we know are designed to work with the color that you've made. So that's certainly an option for you to create a color. Okay, let's go back to the screen. All right, let's see what else I have here. Um, wow. Um, okay, thank you, um, Renata. So this is really, really um, important. This just goes back to um, where I was showing you when you look at beautiful deep colors and as I was mentioning before for um, Priscilla she was wanting a red for her front door and I talked about using um, a Tallman's Poncietta red and when I looked at the color on the back it's telling me that I need a tinted undercoat. So the question that Renata is asking is how do you know what color undercoat goes with what color? That's a really good question. So when we talk about gray undercoats, they usually start from a TU1 to a TU5. So TU meaning tinted undercoat, one to five being the level of gray. So the level of intensity of the gray that you're going to use under the color. So when, you, um, when, you, uh, when you're perusing say a color wall and you're looking at colors and you're thinking, I really like this color and you got to the paint counter and you say, look, I'd love to get a sample out of this. And they'll say to you, look, um, it needs a tinted undercoat one, for example. And you're like, well, how do you know that? So all of the information, so when you purchase or when you're looking to look at a, a bold color, when you go up to the counter, they put it into the system, they put the color name into the system, and then in the comment section or in the information section, it will tell you what else is required. So that's really um, important information. And especially when we're talking about using bold reds as such, etc., because we don't want to be disappointed and having the color look, for want of a better term, you know, insipid, it's not the color that you've chosen. So if you're ever looking um, to embark on, you know, painting a front door in a beautiful red and you're told, you know, you're going to need a gray undercoat, that's the reasoning behind it. So I think it's a really valid point. And then sometimes too, there'll be some beautiful orange tones, etc. And you know, sometimes you'll be told that, I'm sorry, that color's only for interior purposes. So, and that can be sometimes due to the tint, the tints, the um, color of the tints, et cetera, that go in to make it up. So they're really important questions because obviously when we're talking about color, we want you to be excited about color. You know, you're popping it on the wall and we want it to be the color that you had is envisaged. So these are important tips to ensure that you get, you know, your color satisfaction, so to speak. So I hope that answered your question. Um, okay, yep, lucky last, I'm going to do, okay, could you? Okay, Ellis Murphy, thank you very much for joining us. So this is our last question I'll answer on screen, then I'll be um, off screen for the next however long to go through and answer everybody's questions. So your question is, hello, could you recommend a couple of warm whites that are not yellow or too creamy for a modern farmhouse? I'm struggling to find the right match, thanks. I can do, and I'm going to show you. This is the quickest way for me to show you. Oops, let's just make sure I get the right brochure. So we do have, here we go here, a fantastic um, Tobman's whites and neutrals brochure. Now what I really love about this, and so they're making it really easy for everybody to use because when you stand 
um, at a color wall and you're looking at warms and cools etc it can be a little bit daunting but this breaks it down and this is a really good place to start so what's so fantastic about it is and you're gonna have to bear with me while i hold that up on one side it says cool whites and neutrals and on the other side it says warm whites and neutrals now given you're after a warm white let's have a look here so something that's not too creamy um, etc and there's two colors that i really do love from this um, color palette or color selection here it's Torbman's Cloudburst I would certainly have a look at that and the other color here is Torbman's Straw and Grey I think that for a modern farmhouse um, these would work fantastic they're beautiful um, warm whites but they're not too cream so they're not you know on that really really cream side so I hope that helps now before I end the session I'm just going to remind everybody I'm just going to get my notes here so that um, we are running a competition so for everybody out there that you know is having um, color conundrums we're here to help you we're running a competition and we're giving away five free color consultations so um, what we want you to do is to um, in the feed tell us in 25 words or less why you should win um, a color consultation and if you can pop the hashtag in that says Torbman's free color consultation that's going to um, allude us to your entry so please hop into the feed pop that in um, and we'll be drawing winners very soon so that's very very exciting so five lucky viewers will have an opportunity to have a free color consultation each um, which will certainly be able to help you with all of your color conundrums so to speak so I'm going to um, sign off and say thank you very much for joining our session tonight um, it's been fun as it always is um, and welcome you back again next week same time same place next week we will be um, focusing on frequently asked questions so do join us do put all of your questions in the feed we'll be bringing to life ones that we find that we're getting you know a pattern of questions all the time being asked etc so until then stay safe everybody out there and as i always say happy painting Thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Bye.